Hey there guys, it's me the Don Fanatic. It has been a long old time since I've uploaded the video, but welcome to Pokemon Premier League Season 3 Week 1 Match Team Builder. That's right, the battle will be uploaded later today. I'm going to try and coordinate it with Shardy so we can get it uploaded at the same time. There's no spoilers, because to be honest, it was an absolutely fantastic game. So yes, I'm recording this after um, the battle. I won't give you any spoilers. I won't tell you... Um, if I wished I'd change moves and stuff, um, because that might give away some things that happened and whatnot. Um, I'll leave a link to Shardy's channel and Shardy's team builder in the description below, um, but definitely make sure you check out the battle um, from both sides, because I feel like we both played really well. Um, I was really happy with how I played, based on the fact that the last competitive Pokemon game I played was week 11 of season 2 against Ethan, um, and I have a completely different team, I haven't put any practice in, I didn't have any practice games, so I was really happy with how it went. And if I can keep up the performance I had this game against Shardy uh, for the rest of the season, I think I'll do okay. Anyway, um, as you can see, I've got, well, I've got Showdown next to me, but I figured, you know what, let's give you a visual representation of um, of this, because I feel like it's nicer to look at the game rather than, uh, than Showdown. So, as you can see on the, uh, the bottom screen, oh, uh, brilliant, thank you, Showdown, I've been disconnected from Showdown, just as I want to look at my team. Um, if I can't give you what my like, stats are and stuff, then we'll, we'll just have to go with what I have. Um, so as you can see, the six I bought are Nido King, Heliolisk, Skarmory, Florgis, Mega Latios, and Hitmon Lee. So we'll go through uh, each one individually. So first up, we have Royal Pain, the Nido King, with Sludge Wave, Earth Power, Ice Beam, and Toxic Spikes. Toxic Spikes was a relatively last-minute decision. Now I know Shardy has. Um, Two uh, poison types, one being Skun Tank, one being Crobat. They're also both his defoggers. Um, if Crobat comes into the field, it has to defog to get rid of him, because obviously it's a flying Pokemon, it can't get rid of Toxic Spikes. I was very much expecting Skun Tank, but I was also very much expecting the fact that if I bought Nido King in on Skun Tank, uh, he's going to be switching out, so that gives me a chance to set up Toxic Spikes. He's not also going to bring it in his Skun Tank on Nido King, because Earth Power will just kill it, straight up. Um, I think Shardy was a Salt Vest in the end, um, unless he changed it last minute. I'm pretty sure it said he was a Salt Vest in his team builder, um, so I don't know if it would kill, but I am Life Orb, max special attack. Um, EVs on this Nido King are quite funny. I have 164 in HP, 20 in defense, 252 in special attack, 36 in special defense, and 36 in speed with a timid nature. Um, <laughs> it seems like a random mess, but it's all pretty well calculated. 36 timid nature. Uh, lets me out speed, uh, max speed, no, sorry, no speed investment mana fee, neutral nature. Um, I decided to do this because if he was an offensive mana fee, I'm not going to outspeed it unless I'm Scarf anyway. Um, and that was the same story of a lot of his mons, um, but with this, Shardy's team is weird, he has some fast mons and then he has slow mons, he doesn't really have any in between, so with this speed investment, I had enough to outspeed um, all of his slower things. But I was never going to outspeed his faster things anyway, so I decided to invest the rest in bulk. Um, mainly into HP, because um, Nido King was a good check to um, his Skun Tank, which, if you consider the moves it gets Fire Blast, um, Poison Jab, or and, and Crunch that kills my core. It just does. Skarmory Floor, just Latios. I mean, this thing was the best switch I had, and it scared it out. This thing forces switches. Um, I took out Thunderbolt because I figured if he's going to be switching in Mana Fee uh, on Nido King, Sludge Wave and Earth Power are going to do almost just as much as Thunderbolt would. Um, and Toxic Spikes might benefit the team uh, a bit more, despite him, ha despite him having uh, some poison types. Um, so that's Nido King pretty much. Also, Shiny Nido King is Bay. Next up, we have the return of uh, Norris Skate, he's probably MVP from last season, uh, did very well in the MVP race, I'm, I don't know where it came in the end, probably top 10. Um, we've got Expert Belt with Volt Switch, Thunderbolt, Hyper Voice, Brass Knot. Now, I'm bringing Helio List for two reasons, one, it kind of gives me something for um, Thunderous, but not really, because, you know, it gets Focus Blast, but, but that's a different story. Um, it also checks Manaphy. Um, even if he doesn't bring Manaphy, I have to bring this thing. So if I don't bring this, Manaphy could just run Riot on me. Um, it also can one-shot um, non-specially defensive Manaphy um, with max HP, I think. So uh, this thing's pretty good overall. I mean, I love this Pokemon. 
Volt Switch shenanigans. I haven't actually got any. I haven't got Zorok or Dimanitan this week, so I can't do Volt Turn. Um, but Volt Switch is always nice for momentum. Funnel Hole is just for straight up power. Hyper Voice as well. Um, Hyper Voice is just as good as a two times effective uh, hidden power, so I always prefer running Hyper Voice. Also goes through subs, which is something Manaphy likes to do sometimes. Um, he also has a lot of setup potential um, with Lopunny and. Well, I mean, Lopunny will out speed me anyway. Um, and Aromatis, all of which are probably can mine, so it wouldn't be doing much, but it's something to stop the rot. Uh, but it's also a good move in general. I don't think Shadi has too many resistances for it. Grass Knot was there for our Seismitoad. I was pretty confident either Seismitoad or Dredigan were coming because they're his stealth rockers. Figured it would probably be more Seismitoad. I have ways of dealing with both, but I have more ways of dealing um, with Dredigan in Floor, just and Mega Latios. Um, I don't actually have a Grass type, so I think that appeal. Uh, for Seismitoad to come is, is pretty good. Um, so I'm expecting that, and that's why I've Grass Knot. It's enough to one shot, especially defensive, but not Assault Vest. I think. I think. Don't quote me on that. Uh, EVs are 188 Timid in speed. Uh, that's enough to outspeed Max Speed Manaphy, because I can't outspeed Crobat or Lopunny unless I'm Scar. Um, I've got 68 in special defense because this thing is pretty bulky on the special side, um, and I wanted to give it extra bulk because my core is it's pretty good both uh, physically and especially defensively. Uh, it's just nice if I have a few extra switch ins, which is why I gave it uh, the extra in special defense. And then 252 in special attack because obviously I want Helios to do as much damage as possible um, and fast. Next up, we have Skarmory. Um, odd set, well, I say odd set, it, it's not really. Um, Rocky Helmet, pretty standard item. Iron Head, Raw, Roost, and Stealth Rocks. Took Raw, I put Raw on last minute over Drill Peck. I considered this to be, it, it was a check to his lock money, really. Um, but I figured that he probably wouldn't want to stay in on me. Plus, uh, Raw Shenanigans is nice to stop um, setting up. Uh, Iron Head I valued more over Drill Peck because I felt I had more ways of dealing with lock money than I did Aromatisse. So I kept Iron Head, plus Skarmory's a pretty much a very safe switch into Aromatisse unless he has hidden power of fire. Um, but I don't even think that would do too much with my spread. Also, probably guessing Aromatisse would be defensive wish pass cleric. Um, so Moonblast would definitely not be doing much because obviously we resist fairy. Um Stealth Rock is my hazard removal. Um, Roost is obviously for recovery, especially with Rocky Helmet, that's quite important. And I've already gone over Roar and Iron Head. Um, I decided not to bring Defog because Shardy, um, his only method of removal is Defog. So if he brings Defog, he gets rid of his own hazards rather than mine as well. So I didn't feel like I had to um, bring Defog or Rapid Spin this week actually because I have got him on Lee. Um, my team in general isn't weak to Stealth Rocks. I think I only have Darm that is weak to Stealth Rocks. Um, the rest take eh, damage, of course. I mean, everyone takes damage, but I can deal with it, um, especially with uh, Wish Passing and whatnot. So, Skarmory's EVs, max HP of course, because I want this thing to take as many hits as possible, and I want it to be able to pretty much give a lot of chip damage off to that lot any of Shardies. Um, I put 4 in attack, because I want Iron Head to do as much as possible. Um, two, 124 uh, EVs in defense, I'm a bold nature, 124 in special defense, 4 in speed. Um, the speed... I think it's probably just in case Shadi tried to speed creep something. Um, I don't know what it would have been, but I think I probably just put the extra four there because I didn't need it in special attack. 100, I only needed 124 EVs. Uh, I can't remember what it was for. Probably to deal with Lopunny. Like two high jump kicks or something stupid like that. Um, but then the special defense, because I knew Shadi would be wanting to take this thing down with special moves. It was just basically to prolong Skarmory's long, long... I can't say that fucking word. I'm not going to upset it. Longevity, that's the one, I got it. Um, so there wasn't really much reason me putting it fully physically defensive, so I decided to put it in special defense. And that worked quite well um, with Floor Just a set, which we will move on to now, actually. Um, Lashana the Floor Just, this thing. Uh, I did want a Romatish, and Shardy sniped me, so screw you, Shardy. Um, it actually done really well this game. Um, and I was pleasantly surprised by it because. I am a huge fan of Aromatisse. Um, it can do uh, more offensively, but also the same defensive job as Florges. Um, but I was really pleased with how I played with it this um, 
game. I haven't used it too much, but I know it's ob it's obviously a fantastic special wall. It's also got very good special attack, which I didn't even realise. 112 special attack isn't bad for a fairy. Um, but as you can see, we have Moonblast, Energy Ball, Wish, Heal Bell. Shardy's pretty... He's not got a safe switch into a Moonblast other than Crobat, really. Um, obviously, Defensive Manaphy eats lots of moves, so that would take it, but... Zebo is neutral to it, because obviously it's a Dark type as well as Poison type. Uh, Lopunny is weak to it. Uh, Dradigan is weak to it. Um, Seismitoe probably wouldn't appreciate the switching, especially when you combine it with Energy Ball. Energy Ball is obviously there to hit Seismitoe. And the um, Manaphy. Uh, any Seismitoe set he brings, other than like Spec Sludge Wave, can't really do too much to me. Um, so I was pretty happy with this set. Wish and Heal Bell. I decided not to run Protect. Um, turns out, well, no, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say anything. Protect might have been nice in hindsight, but Heal Bell was important because I figured that Shardy would probably be trying to either Thunder Wave or Toxic me um, quite a lot because my core is quite bulky and slowing down Mega Latios um, would be very useful, as you'll see uh, in the game and um, later on. Mega Latios. I didn't really know what to make of it, but as I had never used it before and how it performed in this game against Shardy, I am really looking forward to using it more. Um, I've got leftovers on this thing. I could have kind of gone. I wish I'd gone Rocky Helmet on this thing, you know, um, with Wish, but th that would have forced me to Wish a bit more. Um, but obviously, Wish passing is nice. My core: uh, Gastrodon, Florgius, Skarmory, and Latios. If you want to consider Latios the core, because it can go defensive or offensive, so I consider it part of the core. Um, they all get reliable recovery. Obviously, Lashana gets Synthesis as well, so it can heal itself up as well as do Wish passing shenanigans. So. Um, I'm really looking forward to what I can use Lashana for uh, in the future because I really enjoyed using her this game. Um, the EVs are max HP, 252 of course. Uh, bold Nature again, 134 EVs. That was enough to switch in from max HP to switch in on a high jump kick and a return from a Jolly Lock Honey. Um, didn't really consider Adamant because I didn't. I wasn't too sure if he would bring it. I kind of thought he would. Because I can't, he still outspeeds me with it anyway. Um, but yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't afford to put much more into physical defense because I still needed special wall. Um, and this thing's got like a base 154 special defense. It doesn't need much investment. It, it's still stupid. Um, and then I have what have I got? Four in special attack and 120 in special defense. So overall, mixed. I say mixed wall, still very much specially defensive, but it's got physical investment, um, so it can take some hits a bit better. Next up is the Pokemon which I anticipated using so much. It's it's not it's Mega there on the screen, of course. But this is Mega Latios. Um, I also changed the nickname of Latios and Hitmonlee. We've gone for Easy Jet because well, I thought that might be kind of funny. We've gone Dragon Pulse, Psy Shock, Calm Mind, Recover. EVs are quite funny on this thing as well. We've got 252 in HP, six in defense, 68 in special attack, plus at uh, 182. EVs and speed, timid nature, uh, enough to outspeed max speed Manaphy once again. Um, this thing can actually set up on a defensive Manaphy, because uh, Ice Beam won't be doing much at all, Scald won't do much, you'll just have to go for burn. But I have Recover, and I also have Heal Bell. But um, once this Latios, I mean, I think it was it, I think when it's Mega, it has 189 special attack with this investment. Two, two Calm Minds, and you're hitting 300 and what? Um, 378. Not bad going. Um, you will see its potential in this game against Shardy. Um, these EVs gave me the potential to pretty much clean up Shardy's team. Um, if I get to plus three, apart from obviously Crobat and Lopunny because they outspeed me. But if I could have dealt with them first, um, Latios would be able to do a lot of damage. There was also a lot of potential setup fodder for me. Um, P2 potentially being one if it carries Ice Beam. If you see Shardy's team builder, he didn't. He was trying to hack me to death, the cheeky fuck with try attack and fun the ball. Um, and he also had Toxic as well, just to rub it in. But, um, yeah, I mean, this thing, this performance, I'm really looking forward to using it again next uh, few weeks. Um, but Dragon Pulse and Slideshot pretty much give me good uh, coverage for his team. He hasn't got many switch ins for a Slideshot. Other than his uh, Skun Tank, but obviously that won't appreciate Dragon Pulse after a few Calm Minds, or at all. Um, 
Overall, uh, this thing was just brilliant, this game. I enjoyed using it, and I really look forward to using it again. It's just so bulky. I mean, I have no defensive investment. When this thing goes mega, with the 6 EVs in physical defense and nothing in special defense, I think it hits 121 defense and 140 special defense. Along with the HP, I mean, it gets decent HP as well when it's 187. It, it's so bulky, but it still hits so hard, um, and that's why I really like this thing. That's why I like this thing. Oh, well, that's why I drafted it over normal Latios, because um, I just feel like its bulk it gains when it Mega Evolves just makes it so much more deadly. Obviously, if you got normal, you can go Scar, which uh, would have been really nice in this game actually, um, and Life Orb and Specs and whatnot. But yeah, I. I have high hopes for this thing, but you'll see how it went uh, against Shardy. Finally, we have the win condition, or potential win condition, uh, for uh, this match, and that is Tatsumaki the Hitmonlee. Shout out to uh, Street Fighter there. Mac Punch, close combat, knockoff, Stone Edge. Um, quite risky considering he has an Aromatisse, which I was very much expecting, um, but I was expecting um, Thunderous and Cro uh, potentially Crobat. So I figured Stone Edge would be more important than Poison Jab, as I have ways of dealing with Aromatisse to try and get that thing dead before I set up with Hitmonlee anyway. Also, my voice went really high a second ago, didn't it? That was really weird. Um, we've got on Adamant, 252 in attack, 140 in defense, 116 in speed. Um, I probably should have distributed the EVs better in this thing. Attack, I was fine. I wanted to go max attack because I'm under burden. Um... 116 speed. Oh no, actually no, ignore what I said. I did do the EVs in speed on purpose. Um, I put enough speed in to outspeed a 4 EV neutral nature mana fee, because I know Shardy likes his speed creeping. And so I put that in there just so I could bring this thing and nuke something, because this thing just... Close combat from base 120 attack stab? Yeah, there aren't many switch-ins. Um, Mac Punch was there for Lopony. Um... It was going to cause a lot of fake out Mac Punch, potentially quick attack if he brings it uh, or bought it um, shenanigans. Um, so on Burden was going to be quite important. Now, I didn't really know what I to put on this thing, mainly because um, I had Focus Sash originally, but then I thought, actually, you know what? I don't have Hazard Removal. That's pretty stupid. Um, if he doesn't bring Hazard Removal, then I'm stuck. Next up, I put Lumberry on it, and I wish I'd kept Lumberry on it, because that would have really helped me during the game. Um, but in the end, I decided to put Citrus Berry on. Um, it, it it activated and gave me my Unburden during the game, just at the wrong time. Um, but if this thing can set up correctly, or even just hit the right things with some predictions, it does so much damage. Um, knockoff as well is important because I'm fully expecting Shardy to bring Porygon 2, which he did. Spoilers. Um, and I need the knockoff because uh, I'm not bringing Zorok, which is my other knockoff user. Um, so I, I thought I might as well bring it on this because it would also hit um, things like Thunderous and Crobat neutrally. I have got Stone Edge for them. Uh, obviously, they both switch into fighting moves relatively well. Um, but that's Hit on Lee. Hit on Lee in general is a huge threat to Shadi's team. And after the game, he was like, I was shitting myself because Hit on Lee because I knew it done so much work to my team. Um, so, yeah, it, Hit on Lee was a win condition. A win condition. Um, I feel like Mega Latios and uh, Flaugis were the other ones that were going to be able to carry the team and do a lot of work. So, that was the team builder. I didn't even go what Shadi's team was, so you don't even know if my team prep is good or not. Um, you'll see in the battle, I guess. Uh, next time, I'll try and remember to um, include his team, uh, their teams in like some picture. I'll give you a lowdown of what his team is: Manaphy, Crobat, Aromatis, Thunderous, Ferian, Drudigan, Seismitoad, Scun Tank, Porygon 2, Mega Lopani, Vanillux, and Giraffe. I completely discounted Vanillux and Giraffe because if I didn't draft Hitmonlee or Darm, fair enough, Vanillux would have probably come because it does a lot of damage to my team. Um, but he couldn't risk bringing it. There was no reason for me to bring Darm this week, because he has a Mana Fee, and a Drudigan, and a Seismitoad, and a P2. Um, so there were lots of things that could kind of stop me, so I didn't really fancy bringing that. Otherwise, the other eight, uh, Mag obviously I have uh, Darm, Manatang, Gastrodon, and Zorok, who didn't come to the game for this week. Um, Gastrodon and um, 
Dom, not Dom, Zorok were possibilities, but I felt this was the best six. Um, the way the game played out, I think it was definitely the best six that I could have picked, and I team built pretty well, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for the week one uh, team analysis. Hopefully you enjoyed. Make sure you check out the links below, including Shardy's team builder and channel, as I mentioned at the start of the video. Also, make sure you hang around because the battles, I'll try and, like I said, I'll, I'll also try and coordinate it with Shardy. If not, I'll just upload it as soon as possible. Um, but check out the game. It will be it will be a postcon now. All my games will be postcon this season. Um, it really shows that I could pay attention during this game uh, when I just played it normally. Um, so if I can do that for the rest of my games, that'd be nice. Also gives me time to talk about my plays, you know, start, stop, slow down, speed up. You won't be sitting there for an hour each time, so, um, that'll be nice. Uh, as I said, and make sure, uh, you leave a like if you did enjoy this video, make sure you check out all the channels, especially PPL channel, I'm just rambling now, but PPL channels upload all kinds of analysis and power rankings, there's going to be weekly power rankings, and there's also going to be transfer recaps when transfer windows are open. Um, so make sure you do go and subscribe to that because there's lots of cool people. Also links to all of the PPL members on the channel um, if you want to go subscribe to them. Right, I am now going to go because it's nearly 11. Holy hell, it's nearly 11 o'clock and I haven't had breakfast. See you guys next time.